where you are, a place where you are in your body. At United's campus, we are here on unjustly occupied Dakota homeland, in the sacred place known as Vidote. We are also here between sunrise and sunset, between north wind and southern breeze, between earth and sky. Touched by the wind, washed by the rain, fed by the soil, Warmed by the flame, the circle is now open. This is a moment to invite any healed or healing, helping or holy forces that are important to you to join us in support of our funeral here today. Welcome everyone. We are gathered here today to remember and grieve the bugs that have died due to habitat loss from agricultural expansion and climate change. We gather today to acknowledge the transition from summer to autumn, where it's shorter days and longer nights, and all the changes that come with transition. We thank you for your presence today. Your presence bears witness to the bugs and to our collective grief. We invite you to join in a practice of wonder about bugs. This wonder practice comes from the teachings of Valerie Gore, who writes that to wonder is to cultivate a sense of awe and openness to others' thoughts and experiences, <laughs> their pain, their wants and needs. It is to look upon the face of anyone or anything and say, you are a part of me I do not yet know. Wonder is an orientation to humility, recognizing that others, and bugs as complex and infinite to themselves as we are to ourselves. Wondering gives us information for how to care for them. Wonder is the wellspring of life, of love. So with those words from Valerie, I invite you to feel the support of the chair, couch, or ground beneath you. You can close your eyes or keep them open. Let's take a breath together. Remember a time when you felt wonderstruck. Perhaps this was staring at a night sky, seeing a big body of water for the first time. Where were you? Who were you with? 
What were the smells or the feels on your skin around you? Notice the felt sense of awe in your body. Let's invite wonder into this present moment and bring a bug or an insect to mind. Perhaps a ladybug, perhaps a firefly, a butterfly, a fuzzy little caterpillar you used to wander after as a kid. Choose a bug or insect that allows you to be curious about it. Take some time to wonder about where it lives. What does it see every day? What does it eat? What other living things does it interact with? What memories does that bug or insect hold for you? Now imagine saying to it, you are a part of me I do not yet know. Notice if you feel a sense of wonder in your body. Know that it is, it is okay if you don't. Know that our wonder for our insect kin can be practiced and cultivated so that we can learn how to care and love all living beings. I invite you to take a deep breath. Thank you for practicing wonder. Turn now back to Lux. Insects are essential to the proper functioning of ecosystems. They're food for other creatures, they're pollinators and recyclers of nutrients. And in 2019, a global research analysis found that 40% of insect species globally are nearing extinction at a rate eight times faster than mammals, birds, and reptiles. As the World Wildlife Fund reported this month, global insect decline is happening in the context of a 73% loss among all worldwide, worldwide average wildlife populations since 1970. Because of the scale of this loss, I struggle often to feel connected to it. So I'm going to tell you a story from my own experience that helps this kind of information land in my heart. When I think of fireflies, I'm immediately returned to memories of being a kid, maybe six or seven years old, on my grandparents' land in the St. Croix River Valley. I loved the fireflies that appeared there each time on the mowed lawn in front of their house. I loved that they flew slow and low to the ground, like tiny lanterns hung in the air at my eye level. It's not that I have forgotten about fireflies in the last however many years. It's that I've had few occasions to remember them. For instance, I was outside for almost every sunset this summer, and I don't recall seeing one. Their absence has become unremarkable to me. But two summers ago, I was camping on a homestead in northern Iowa with a bunch of other folks, and I left my tent in the middle of the night, feeling grumpy um, in the way that you do when you have to pee in your camping. <laughs> And I looked out at where I was and was completely arrested because everywhere I could see there were fireflies. 30 feet up to the tops of the trees, nothing had seemed between them and the stars. It was impossibly beautiful. And I realized I had not seen anything like it before, not even as a kid. And that was when I felt grief, when it landed in my heart. 
Those fireflies filling the air with their slow blinking presence was so much more than any of the nights of my life when they had been absent. In their unexpected, abundant presence, I felt how much I had missed them. I'm deeply grateful for that experience. It's a memory that I want to share with other people so that we can hold it together. And I'm grateful too to that place in Northern Iowa because it reminds me of the power of small pockets of biodiversity. Insect species develop with exquisite attunement to hyper-local environments, which makes them especially vulnerable to extinction. Caring for insects then is an invitation to carefully tend to our own hyper-local environs, to know them exquisitely well, as Rachel invited us to do to protect and replenish complex ecologies right where we are. May we support each other to keep the insects alive where we can, whether on earth or in our shared memory as gifts to our present and future. So now is a moment where we'll pause and I'd like to invite anyone here to share a story of a bug encounter that has inspired in you wonder or curiosity or grief, or maybe even a little bit of trepidation. I have a big rain garden in my backyard and it's really fun to watch all the bees on all the plants. And also I've had to learn how to get comfortable and have so many bees around mm -hmm. to not panic when I see them. Remember. Mm -hmm. My family went to Costa Rica in the spring and I have three little boys. We went off full day hike in the rainforest um, with an awesome guide who told us two things at the start. One, stay on the path. <laughs> I mean, he looked up like my little, like stay on the path. <laughs> um, big cats, snakes, tarantulas, stay on the path. And number two was, do not disturb the ants. Mm -hmm. He said the forest cannot function mm -hmm. without the ants. Mm -hmm. So our whole six, seven hour hike was mostly focused on ants. Mm -hmm. Everybody was so excited when we saw a path of thousands of ants carrying leaves, partial leaves bigger than, you know, six of them combined across, up and down, over and around. The, the conversations we had with the guide about decomposition and the role of these ants in the ecosystem was amazing. I have so many pictures and videos of ants <laughs> to the point where everybody at the end was like, and we need to keep moving, we need to go. I'm like, I know, but you can't. It was wondrous. sound of the cicadas at the beginning was uh, a beautiful reminder to me. I grew up in West Virginia where we get the periodic cicadas and I've been able to be there a couple of times over my life when they have an emergence. And it is, I mean, just astonishing to see the number of these giant insects that come crawling out and the incredible feeding frenzy that happens across the whole ecosystem. And, uh, and it, and it touches the humans and the human companions too. Dogs will eat them in addition, of course, the birds. Um, but, uh, you know, their strategy is just so different from, from most other creatures of any sort, including insects, but, and it, and it involves being eaten, quickly eaten by the millions, mm -hmm. by absolutely everything around. Um, and it, and, and, and destroyed in so many ways so that a handful can reproduce but it's um you know it is gruesome and uh produces a lot of disgust for humans too and but then also so 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 much fascination um yeah and, they, and then their carcasses are just absolutely <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, but but it's yeah, it's amazing and unique. And and if you ever have a chance and have not had been able to see the cicada periodic cicada emergence, I think it's worth traveling for. I lived in uh, Key West until I was eight, um, and the backyard was the bay. Um, so there were a few uh, creatures that became characters in the lives of me and my siblings. Um, some fish, some birds, but then also this one particular type of beetle. Um, there were probably many beetles, but we all just thought of it as the same one beetle. <laughs> <laughs> His name was Henry, uh, the Henry bug. <laughs> And um, I don't even know the name of this actual actual species, but it was a black beetle with like a red, when it flew, it had like a red cross on its back. Um, and a few years ago, my siblings and I, my family, um, goes to the Adirondacks every summer. Um, and we were there and we saw a Henry bug. And, um, and I, I haven't seen Henry in other parts of my life, but just, it, she heard their appearance in um, in like two two places that are really important in my memory and in my like family formation um, feels significant and it's really lovely to think of Henry as a friend. Cool. Mm -hmm. Are there any other stories that would like to be spoken into this space? I'd share. Yeah, when, um, uh, where I used to live, there was a lake that my family and I would go to sometimes to hang out at. Um, um, and uh, one springtime we were up there, um, and it was kind of early in the spring, and I remember it as being right around Easter, but I think that might have been like my symbolic imagination overlaying it later. But we were there for like the dragonfly uh, emergence, um, and so we just like watched these, you know, bugs like on the shore, just, like split out of their own backs and become mm. something new. And we all just like kind of just crouched on the beach and just stared at them. I don't know, probably an hour, like six, seven, 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 seven. And, yeah. And then thinking about them like that, part of you know, that I, part of me that I do not yet know, it's like they were so hazy, but that's such kind of a wonderful meditation. Well, that just looking at alien also part of the world. Are there any stories that folks on Zoom would like to share that might be in the chat or that you'd like to share um, by un unmuting? And I'm also curious, Zoomers, can you hear us well? We're using a new speaker for the first time. Great. Pan has a story on Zoom. Yeah. If I do. When I was working, this is from Pan. When I was working camps in the UK, I saw a huge mosquito wasp like bug like bug and was shocked in an awe of its size. Scared because I didn't know what it was or what it could do. It was dark at night and I was attracted to the only light source of can, the kitchen. My fellow staff and I stepped out and let it do Ken's thing. I eventually found out it was not a worry for humans that may have eaten wasps or mosquitoes, which is a bonus to all of us. <laughs> It still sits in my visual memory as whoa, a massive and unexpected this is. Yeah, I see Jen on Zoom, and I think this will be our last story. Yeah, I think about when I'm kayaking on the lake and I can see these bugs that are just like standing on the water because, you know, the the surface tension is like holding them up and they're scooting across the surface. That's cool. Thank you, everyone. Today we name and remember a selection of insect species, keeping in mind the whole of insect life extinguished and still surviving on planet Earth. 
We light these candles to honor the sacred dignity of our insect kin and to acknowledge that our own lives depend on their continuing existence. Central Valley Grasshopper, formerly found in the Central Valley of California, United States, caused the extinction unknown. Bethany Beach Firefly, Sussex County, Delaware, United States, critically endangered due to habitat loss. Mono Lake Diving Beetle, formerly found in the United States, extinct, last seen living in 1994. Cloud Copper Butterfly, South Africa, endangered due to habitat decline caused by deforestation, poor fire management, and invasive plant expansion. Three-toothed caddis fly, formerly found in the United States, pronounced extinct in 1986 due to habitat loss. Bleophagan chestnut moth, formerly found in Virginia, United States, extinct. Alpine stonefly, Victoria, Australia, endangered due to habitat loss. Wintry starworm firefly, Hong Kong, endangered due to light pollution and hiking trail development. Dakota skipper butterfly, grasslands of the upper Midwest, United States, endangered due to habitat loss, flooding, pesticide use, and invasive plant expansion. Coco Noctuid moth, formerly found in Maui and Oahu, Hawaii, extinct, last seen living in 1926. Large Blue Lake Mayfly, New South Wales, Australia, endangered due to habitat loss. St. Helena Giant Earwig, formerly found on St. Helena Island in the South Atlantic Ocean extinct due to human intrusion and disturbance. Chestnut clearwing moth, formerly found in the United States, extinct due to the loss of its primary food source, last seen living in 1996. Heron's cave beetle, formerly found in France, extinct, last seen living in 1994. Pointy lobed firefly, southeastern United States, endangered due to habitat loss, lowered water tables, and light pollution. American burying beetle, United States and Canada, critically endangered due to habitat loss. Winter scoli butterfly, Western Cape Province, South Africa, critically endangered due to habitat loss. Franklin's bumblebee, California and Oregon, United States, critically endangered due to agricultural development, invasive species expansion, and pollution. Robust burrowing mayfly, formerly found in Indiana, Kentucky, and Ohio, United States, extinct due to water pollution and habitat loss last seen living in 1926. Turkish red damselfly, Mediterranean coast, including Syria, Turkey, and Greece, endangered due to habitat fragmentation and loss. Mysterious lantern firefly, Delmarva Peninsula, Delaware, United States, critically endangered due to habitat loss because of sea level rise. Elusive skimmer dragon, South Africa, critically endangered due to habitat loss. Zanzibar giant forest grasshopper, formerly found in Zanzibar, extinct due to habitat loss, last seen living in 1896. Mwapa silent grasshopper, formerly found in Tanzania, extinct due to habitat loss, last seen living in 1946. Rocky Mountain Locust, formerly found in the Western United States and Canada. In 1875, a swarm of 12.5 trillion 
Rocky Mountain locust was reported in the Western US, speculated to have been the largest gathering of animals known to modern scientific history, now extinct, last seen living in 1902. Pacific Hawaiian Damsfly. Hawaii, endangered due to habitat loss and invasive species expansion. Illinois Sawfly, <clears throat> formerly found in Rock Island County, Illinois, United States. Extinct, last seen living in 1860. Rusty Patched Bumblebee, United States and Canada critically endangered due to human development, energy production and mining, pollution, and climate change. Now we light two final candles. We light a candle to mourn all those insects, named and unnamed, that have been lost to the face of the earth in this ongoing mass extinction event. And we light a candle to honor all those insects named and unnamed, who struggle to survive in a world of rapid change and loss. I invite you to join with me to say um, a reflection together. We honor all of the insects May we hold and keep you in the space of our collective memory. Blessings be you. Now I invite your gent to lead us in the sun. Repeat after me. Let them glow, there you go, firefly. Flash and a glow, there you go, firefly. Catch a glimmer from the corner of my eye. Catch a glimmer from the corner of my eye. Sweet summer dark, filled with your spark. Sweet summer dark, filled with your spark. Flash and a glow, there you go, firefly. Flash and a glow, there you go, firefly. Try to do it all together. Flash and a glow, there you go, firefly. Catch a glimmer from the corner of my own. Sweet summer dog. Fill with your spark. Catch and a glow, there you go, firefly. One more time. Flash and a glow, there you go, firefly. Catch a glimmer from the corner of my sweet summer. With a flash and a glow, together we hold space for what has been. We are grateful for the rich ecosystems of our non-human kin. We are thankful for the gifts of such vibrant life around us.
We are humbled to be in relationship with earth, with stones and rivers, ferns and fungi, and with each miraculous bug. We are blessed to be here now with each other. We will close with a poem by Mary Oliver, but before we do that, I want to invite those who have joined in person today to make a rolled beeswax candle and grab a small pack of seeds to take with you as you depart today's chapel. Materials and instructions can be found at the entrance to the chapel. May these seeds become flowers in our world and these candles provide a flash and glow wherever you go. As we prepare to leave this space, may you feel a measure of peace in your hearts, a warmth in your soul, and firefly light to guide you in the coming days. Fireflies by Mary Oliver. At Blackwater, fireflies are not even a dime a dozen. They are free. And each floats and turns among the branches of the oaks and the swamp azaleas looking for another, as who doesn't? Oh, blessings on the intimacy inside fruition. Be the foxes or the fireflies or the dampness inside the petals of a thousand flowers. Though Eden is lost, its loveliness remains in the heart and the imagination. He would take her in a boat over the dark water. She would take him to an island she knows where the blue flag grows wild and the grass is deep, where the birds perch together, feather to feather on the bow. And the fireflies, blinking their little lights, hurry toward one another, and the world continues, God willing. We give thanks for the earth and the sky. We give thanks for the wind, the rain, the soil, the plain. We give thanks to all those healed and healing, helping and holy forces that have supported us here today. And we give thanks for each other, for our presence as we gather. The circle is now closed. Control the blessings. Thank you everyone. And thank you everyone who joined us on Zoom. Personally.